Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing Tutorial. I'm Jordan Kanigi and today it's hotter than heck so we thought we'd come out here on these creeks and streams up in the high mountains and show you guys how to fish for these beautiful wild trout that we have. Today our hot topic is going to be how to fish with spoons for wild trout in these creeks and streams. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite spoons and show you some of my favorite techniques and styles of water that you want to look for when you're trying to target these fish with spoons. So stay tuned, you guys are going to like today. So right away, right out of the gate, we're going to go over some of the basics of the rod selection that you want to have. I kind of talk about the same two rods every time we make one of these tutorials because they're my favorite. Anything's going to work for this as long as it's that light line rating. What I have here next to me is the Okuma Salilo two to six pound rod. This is an ultralight, basically just targeted at trout fishing rod. You can use it for catching whatever you have in your way or in your area in the country, whether it be bass, shad, trout, anything like that. It's a really great versatile rod and I love to have it because it's sensitive. It casts light lures really nicely having that soft tip and it's just a fun rod. It's a lot of fun to fight small or big fish on. So what I have that lined with is an Inspira 3000 series reel. Again, I like the 3000 size reel, whatever brand it is that you're gonna need, uh, mainly because it's versatile. I can take it off this rod, I can use it for steelhead, I can use it for walleye, I can use it for whatever I need, as well as that trout fishing, you can put that light line on there and get a lot of line on in case you're gonna be catching big fish. So what I have on here though is a 10 pound floor, or excuse me, 10 pound braided line. And that's very crucial in this style of fishing and I go over it a lot because of the casting ability. You don't necessarily need a 10 pound test to catch a, a six ounce fish, but what happens is if you go too light in a, in a monofilament or a fluorocarbon, it doesn't cast very well. It comes off the reel goofy and it likes to knot up a lot, especially if you're fishing some kind of hardware like a spoon or a spinner that's gonna be out there rotating and, that, and causing your line to just twist and twist and twist. That braided line takes a line twist really well. So that's why I go with that 10 pound, whether it be P-line, tough line, whatever. We're with P-line, it's my favorite. But I would go ahead and use that 10 pound braid all the way up to maybe a 15, which might be a little too heavy yet. The 10 casts really nice, it goes through the guides well, and it works perfectly when using these light lures. So what's the most important part of that little, that little procedure is though, is I like to put a mono, or excuse me, a monofilament or a fluorocarbon bumper on that line. You can see where I've done that right here with a blood knot. We do a lot of these tutorials and we have the different knot tutorials on our YouTube page, Addicted Fishing. So go over and subscribe and you'll be able to see all those tutorials that we have showing you how to do these kind of little tricks and trades. Uh, but I add that fluorocarbon bumper so that those fish aren't seeing that braided line come towards them in these nice clear water streams like this. So this is my favorite setup. I like the Salilo. A little more of a high end setup is this Guide Select Pro that we have. This one's even a little lighter and it's a little longer, so it's a lot of fun to fight fish on. This is again a two to six pound line rating, a little bit fancier, sexy cork handle. And this has the RTX 3000, which is a little bit cheaper reel than the Inspira, but again, a very versatile reel that you can use for any kind of species that you're gonna be fishing for. So what we're gonna jump over to now that we've covered all this sexiness here is our spoon choice. Really, there's, there's a lot of different manufacturers of spoons in the world, in the US, that you can buy these from. You can go and get the Danielsons right off the shelf. You can buy P-Lines, you can buy Blue Fox spoons, whatever it's gonna be. You wanna get something that has a lot of variations in colors. A lot of these trout spoons come in packs. Um, so you can get all these different colors, all these different styles of spoon, different weights, just by buying one package of things. But if you can't, go in and buy different colors, get different variables. Really, my go-to is either gonna be the silver or the gold. I really like just a plain silver gold spinner. If you're gonna be trolling in lakes or different things like that, these different colors, the daredevils, the muskie and the, and the frog are gonna work a lot better. And if you're using those for different species of fish, not only trout or maybe brown trout that are gonna be a little more adept to eating big prey, that, that's really gonna help you a lot having those different colors. So what I have sitting next to this though too is something that we don't wanna forget because it's probably one of the most effective ways of catching trout in the world and that's a cast master. This is a different kind of spoon, a lot heavier, something that works well in lakes and rivers, but they're a lot heavier. So if you're just getting into this style of fishing, excuse me, you're gonna wanna go with these last once you've really figured out how to manage your line and fish these holes effectively before you go throw in a super heavy spoon that costs three, four dollars in there. So keep that in mind, the blue and silver, the gold, any other colors work really good but having that cast master in your pocket is gonna really help you catch fish. I'm gonna show you guys how to fish this as well in this tutorial. We're gonna go forward and kinda keep talking about our spoons that we have here next to us. 
One of the different styles and one of the things I don't preach a lot in a lot of these tutorials is using swivels. A lot of the time when you're fishing these spoons, you're gonna wanna use some kind of swivel or a snap ring on your line to be able to attach those spoons. If you tie your line straight to the head of the spoon, you're never gonna get the same presentation as if you have a swivel or a snap ring allowing that spoon to freely move around as it goes through the current. Because one of the basic and one of the most crucial things of fishing these spoons is to have moving water. And I'm gonna go over that in just a minute when we go and show you how to fish. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, this is a number eight barrel swivel with a, with a clevis. I like to stay small and maybe even black. I had a gold one today. Uh, but kind of match the color of your spoon, whatever it's gonna be. But I like the black ones, but I like to stay small so it's not really intrusive to those fish. So I'm gonna just do a normal fisherman's knot, just six or seven wraps, seven sounds lucky today. Back through the eye that I created with that line. Oh, if I can do it. Oh, come on, fans, don't fail me now. And pull that tight. I'm gonna cut that tag end off. You don't want that affecting your presentation at all. Cut that little tag end off with your beautiful, awesome little Gerber scissors. And then I'm gonna take one of my favorites, so I'm gonna go with the silver here today, and I'm gonna run that right through that eye at the top, close that swivel, and we're ready to fish, you guys. So, what we're gonna do now, we've kind of gone over a few of the spoons. If you guys have any questions, be sure and drop a comment below. And most of all, I want you to drop a comment below right now, I'll wait for you, and tell me what your favorite color spoon is that you like to use. Mine's silver and gold, kind of goes through both contrasts of fishing. I might like a blue and silver one, but really that silver and gold is awesome for me. So comment below with what your favorite spoon is. Be sure to like this video. We're gonna step into the river here and show you guys how you wanna fish these spoons. So first and foremost, a lot of you out there may disagree with me, but when I look to fish a spoon somewhere, they're not necessarily the most versatile style of fishing out there. What they are though is a very aggressive and they're a very intrusive style of fishing. So a lot of times it reacts and it keys in on some of the biggest fish you'll ever catch. That's why I love fishing them. But the key part of fishing a spoon is to fish it in moving water. A lot of times they fish really well behind a boat if you're trolling and that's because you're moving that spoon. But if you're fishing in stale pools and stagnant water, you don't get the same presentation as you do in a moving pool. So what I have behind me here is what I would call your atypical best kind of spoon fishing run. You're not gonna find a lot of holes to fish a spoon on the rivers, but the ones you do, you should definitely fish them because again, it keys in on that aggression of those big fish. It's a very dying, vulnerable presentation. So what I have behind me is a nice, fast moving riffle. What I'm always gonna do when I'm fishing a spoon is start at the top of the hole and work my way to the end because you're gonna be mostly casting across and swinging the spoon. This isn't necessarily a cast and retrieve kind of presentation. It's more of a current variable presentation that you're gonna use the river or the creek to swing that spoon down to the fish. So what I'm gonna do here, I've started, I'm at the very top of this hole. I got nice fast water coming through this broken riffly area, this boulder patch, and it's peeling out into this awesome, beautiful little hole here with a nice foam line. Again, these fish are, are gonna sit in that foam. They're looking for their easiest spot to feed and their best spot to pursue while staying hidden. So I'm gonna start at the top, I'm gonna grab my spoon here, and I'm gonna start working my way down. The best way to start your cast is always at least at 90 degrees or 45. You don't want to start up river. Because if you're using any other kind of spoon, it's going to be heavy. So it's going to go straight down to the bottom and snag. But what you want to do is start at that 90 degrees or 45 down river and allow that spoon to swing into the presentation. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to do a nice little underhand cast because it's not very far across here. I'm going to reel that line tight. Oh, and I got one already. You see that everybody? They work really good. So as I was doing that, I was just kind of set up for my drift and I got demolished. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna cast over there and try to get that little guy. But what's gonna happen guys is as I swing out of that pool and into that fast water, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna reel slowly, but as that line starts to catch my, my that current, excuse me, as the current catches the line, it's gonna create the presentation for me. So I'm gonna stop reeling and let the spoon swing. So nice little underhand again, over into the eddy, reel it into that current there. And once it hits that current, I'm just gonna let it go. You see my rod tip moving, it's got a nice steady thump to it. And having that right thump and that right presentation is what's gonna key in those fish. I'm gonna start my cast a little bit more downriver. I'm gonna reel it right into that moving water. And then, oh, I got them all chasing it. And I'm just gonna let that thing swing right over until that drift's done. Okay. I'm gonna make one more, kinda at 45 down here since we got a bunch of chasers over there. Now what you guys can do, you kind of saw me doing there, is you can make action with that, with that spoon. 
That's kind of the beauty of that cast master that I'm gonna show you guys how to fish here in just a second. Or any spoon is you can use your rod tip and if you can see the spoon especially, use that rod tip and create that presentation to show those fish to get them to bite, especially if you can see the fish chasing it like we can here. So now that I've made that cast, I'm gonna keep working my way down river and angle and with my feet as well. Again, very crucial in this style of fishing for the, in these small creeks is to keep moving, cover the water and find the fish. So as I'm doing that, I'm gonna go down a little bit further, really at 45 now, I'm gonna let that thing sink and start pulling into that current and creating its own little, there we go, now it started. Swinging right into this back eddy. And we did it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna move on down, try to get to some more biting fish and keep showing you guys how to fish this run. Okay, so now that I've moved down about five steps, I'm gonna start right out at about 90, 90 degrees again and start working my cast down river in degree every time I go to make a new cast. So let that bad boy sink, let the current grab it, and let it start to swing right over into that main seam, right behind all these boulders. And so now you guys can kind of see in this video of why we wouldn't want to fish stale water. If we don't have that moving current and we don't have that moving water, that spoon's gonna have a hard time getting that flopping action that those fish really like to key in on. So now that I've made that cast, I'm gonna go downriver a little bit more, keep my tip pointed down at the water. And again, you wanna be following that spinner, or that spoon, excuse me, all the way across that river or creek, whatever it's gonna be. And the reason that is, is so you have the most amount of sensitivity through your rod tip. That sensitivity is what's gonna let you know you have a bite or on bottom, and that's really what's key, is to keep this off the bottom. I'm gonna go down river just a little bit more with that cast. Let her fall. Okay, so now that I've covered that, you guys, I'm gonna take a couple more steps down, and I'm gonna cast again. So again, now that I've moved, we're gonna go back to 90, keeping that rod tip pointed right at the spoon, create some of that action, now it's hit the current. I'm gonna keep that tip down, let it work right across that current seam, right in front of all those fish, and swing it in and finish it. Perfect. I'm gonna make one more cast of 45, and then I'm gonna start over and I'm gonna show you guys how to fish that cast master quickly, and then we're gonna get out of here. So mainly the whole, the time that you're actually effectively fishing with these spoons is about from 45 degrees to 90 back to the bank below you. It's not so much right when it hits the water. You're gonna let it hit the water, you're gonna set up your drift, and then you're gonna use the current to swing that spoon all the way across. Again, that braided line and the rod tip angle and direction towards your spoon is gonna help with that sensitivity and help you find bottom without getting snagged every time. Because that can be some of the most frustrating parts of fishing these spoons, is that they're heavy and they like to grab bottom a lot. So switching out to a sidewash hook and using that right rod angle and presentation is gonna help you stay off bottom and keep fishing. All right, so we fished that spoon out. I'm gonna go ahead over and grab that cast master. We're gonna start over again and show you guys a little bit different presentation to use with a heavier spoon. So now I have the cast master on you guys. And the main difference between the cast master and a normal spoon is its shape and its weight. So what I'm gonna do a little bit differently as I'm fishing this is I'm gonna allow it to get a little deeper, but I'm gonna to have to add the action to that spinner with my rod tip and my rod action to be able to get that spinner to give a good presentation, or that spoon, excuse me, to give a good presentation through the hole. That being because it's heavier and it's not gonna catch the current as well and give you that spoon action like you want. So what I'm gonna do is almost a, what we call a twitching presentation or a jigging presentation. I'm gonna cast out and I'm gonna fish that through the same kind of technique, that 45 to 90 technique, but I'm gonna give that spoon action all the way through the hole. I'm gonna start at 90 here. I'm gonna let that sink for just a second, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jig and I'm gonna reel. I'm gonna jig and I'm gonna, oh, got him! Oh, so you guys saw that that really aggressive action, that, that up and down presentation with that spoon immediately keyed in that trout to bite. So, and a lot of it I think too is I was getting deeper in the hole. So what I'm gonna do it again, same exact thing. The key to it is to not drop the, the spoon, or just to, excuse me, drop the spoon farther than you lift it. So as you go through there, you have that current against your line. So every time you lift your rod, that, that current is gonna counteract your rod lift and add about a foot to your jig. So a nice short stroke jig with a two reel count is really gonna kind of be the technique you wanna use. So jig, two reels, jig, two reels. And as soon as it hits that current, I'm just gonna let it do its thing and just use my rod tip. So one more time over here. Let it sink, jig, two reels, jig, two reels, 
Jig, two reels. Jig, two reels. And what those fish are gonna like about that is that falling presentation. They're always gonna hit it on the way down. So you wanna be prepared for that. And again, have that rod tip pointed straight towards that spoon so that you don't miss that take by not paying attention and having your rod off to the left and not being able to feel any of the sensitivity. Now you see here, this, this water is taking me enough that I don't even need to reel. I'm gonna leave it right behind that boulder and I'm gonna keep twitching it and jigging and I'm gonna bring it in. I'm gonna go across just a little bit farther here. Got some, some muck on me. I'm gonna go down river just a little bit further to 45. Just like so, nice jigging motion. Oh, there was another one. They're tearing me up on this thing today. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and move down a little bit further now that we've covered this little pool. And especially if you've gotten bites in a certain spot, that's gonna even encourage you more to move because you've kind of, at some instances, unless you change colors or presentation, you've kind of blown your shot on those trout. So keeping that movement and keeping going down river with those presentations is gonna be crucial. Okay, I moved on down and start at 90. You see here, again, I don't even need a reel because I have enough current. I'm gonna let that current take the spoon. I'm gonna keep adding that motion. That was a big one. What did I tell you about the spoons? I'm not sure what that was, but that was a very big fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast again here. Dang it. Well, everybody, I wish we could have shared that one. That was a big fish. But you guys see with that jigging technique, with that lifting and falling technique, the fish really can't help themselves in a lot of times. So using these cast masters, a little bit heavier, a little bit different colors, whether it be gold, green, or blue, change it up and be sure to fish these things in every little way you can as you go through these holes in these moving water situations. All right, one more cast down river, that 45. This one here, I'm probably gonna need to reel a little bit more because I'm fishing that shallower water, but I'm gonna keep that jigging motion and I'm gonna keep that nice steady reel so that it doesn't get snagged on bottom and work right through the end of that hole there. All right, everybody, so that pretty much wraps it up. To go back through and cover everything about spoons, different styles, different colors, and different water is really where you wanna go and use these spoons. Again, they're not the most versatile presentation you can use out there on the river, but sometimes, as you saw, they can be the most effective. So find that moving water, have those spoons in your back pocket and never leave home without them because you never know the size of fish or what kind of fish you're gonna be able to grab on these spoons, they work awesome. So thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. Be sure if you like this video, go down like, be sure and subscribe to this channel. And I want you guys again to comment below with what's your favorite kind of spoon or whether or not you even like to use them. Drop that comment below, leave us that little like and thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. And before I leave you, don't forget to go over here and hit this little yellow bell notification to see all the different trout tutorials, salmon, steelhead, walleye that we have coming out every single day. So this is all for you guys to see. Be sure to share it out there with the world. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys on the river.